welcome to all of our attendees this morning. We want to say thank you very much for joining us for these Tuesday morning toolbox talks. And again, to all of our members, we really appreciate the amount of time that you've taken out in order to get in contact with us about what you want to hear during these toolbox talks. Now, to start off with, we always have the tips to continually prevent COVID-19. That would mean washing your hands regularly with soap and water. Uh, if this is not available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. If you have unwashed hands, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. And then if you can, adhere to social distancing measures, especially around those who are sick. Cover your cough and sneeze with a flexed elbow or preferably use a tissue and then throw that into the bin afterwards. A very important one is cleaning and disinfecting frequently touched objects and surfaces so that you prevent that cross-contamination from one person to the next. And then if you haven't done so already, perhaps you can do your part and get vaccinated, especially if you have a company policy on that. Now, talking about company policies, today's Toolbox Talk, we are going to be looking at maternity. Now, why are we looking at maternity in a health and safety Toolbox Talk? Well, for one thing, a person who is thinking of getting pregnant, certain risks to their health, to their safety, that could potentially cause harm to themselves. Now, we also want to protect the infant child, the unborn child at various stages of the pregnancy as well. So maternity also comes down to having a good safety procedure in place. Now, what does this mean for you as a company? Or well, what does it mean for you as an individual? If you are thinking of becoming pregnant, if you are working with someone who is thinking of becoming pregnant, or if you're an owner of a company who has employees who want to become Become pregnant or who are pregnant, they are things that have to be put in place in order to protect employees. Now, as an employee and an employer, you want to ensure that the health and safety of your company is of foremost importance. Why is that? Well, we've seen before in these two box talks that a safe company and a safe employee base leads to a more productive employee base because they are off less often because of incidents and accidents. They take safety seriously. And so there's more time spent doing it the right way. Yes, it does take time. And oftentimes, a safety becomes the barrier between yourself and getting on to site. However, you have seen it before. As soon as you're on site and safety is doing well, then the project flows and the task continues to get done better. Now, we're not saying that there aren't those uh, times where it doesn't work out for you and we have had uh, very difficult situations with difficult clients, but that is why we are here for you. That is why uh, OHSS is a consultant for our officer for its members. And please remember that is free consulting. So if you have any questions or queries, you have that WhatsApp number as well as the email uh, to send your questions, your comments, your concerns, or what is happening on site so that we can give you the best advice and assist you with what is actually happening. So when we look at maternity in general, the employee specifically, the employee who wants to be pregnant or is going to get pregnant. Now, remember, they fall part of a vulnerable employee group because of the inherent risk to the pregnant person and the unborn baby. Now, the complexity of fertility, pregnancy, and the postpartum period and the large number of variables make it impossible to present sharply defined criteria that can be applied with precision when it comes to your specific case. Now, that being said, it basically means that when we look at each individual case within pregnancy, it's very much like each individual employee within a company. There are too many variables to make a standard case. This means that your company should have its own policy and plan in place, something that is bespoke, something that is unique and tailor-made to your situation. Now, what we've done at IOPSA is designed a risk assessment as well as a methodology or a procedure that you can put in place uh, for pregnancy and maternity in the company. This, again, leaning towards the priority scenario, is really something that we have tried to make as standard as possible, but with as much information as possible to be able to teach uh, you, the employer, as well as the employee what to do in these situations. But remember, these are only standards. We can only give you uh, some sort of guideline and then you've got to make it your own. 
But on top of that, at IOPSA, we are also giving you the knowledge base and the practical advice on how to do it yourself. So please reach out to us if you do need some more information on this. But there must be some basic assumptions in place. First of all, the pregnant worker. We assume that the pregnant worker desires to continue to work as long as they are reasonably able to do so without undue risk to themselves, their fetus, or others. So that is one basic assumption on behalf of the employee, the employee who wants to get pregnant or is currently pregnant, that you actually do want to continue to work as long as you are reasonably able to do so. Now, reasonably able, again, falls within a very vague definition. It's very similar to risk management, reasonably practicable. Well, what does that mean? It means that each scenario is going to be specific. And so even if a company has a pregnancy policy or maternity leave policy in place, each individual within that company may have a varied situation or circumstance that will need to be dealt with differently. Please treat it as such. Remember, each individual uh, needs to be dealt with in a specific manner. And each individual is going to have a different situation that they find themselves in, even within the pregnancy. Then there is another basic assumption, and that is on behalf of the employer. We hope that the employer values the pregnant person as an employee and is concerned with their well-being. The employer, therefore, will desire that they continue working as long as they can reasonably do so without risk to themselves, their fetus or others and will arrange any reasonable modifications of the job that will enable them to continue working. Now, that uh, word phrase or that little snippet, reasonable modifications of the job, comes from the basic conditions of employment, especially the guard to pregnant workers within South Africa. And so these reasonable modifications may mean that when you move Further into the various trimesters, uh, there are three trimesters, first, second, and third. Uh, at each of these, there may be different risks or hazards that are faced with the employee. They may face different circumstances. And so a reasonable modification to their job, to the task that they perform, may be needed in order to protect them even more from the task that they are performing. Now, we're going to go through some of the hazards that we would find within the plumbing industry that could affect a pregnant person. And then as a guard, remember, we, we cannot use you know, 20 minutes of a toolbox talk to discuss everything to do with pregnancy. And that is why we are encouraging you to reach out to us uh, if you have these situations, or even if you want to know more about uh, this type of information for maternity and pregnancy within a company. But what we are looking at is what is going to happen to the person? Well, the degree to which the symptoms of early pregnancies affect the individual is quite variable and often is influenced by the general health and psychological state of the pregnant person. Again, we cannot say for sure exactly what is going to happen, but we do have some proof of within the first, second, and third trimester of what is reasonably going to happen to that person and how they're going to means of a discussion between the employer and the employee. And this, again, we cannot stress enough, open lines of communication between yourself and that employee, uh, between you as the employee and your employer is vital in order to express to them what is this variable um symptom, the, the degrees of uh, influence that you might have over yourself psychologically, your general health, how you're feeling, and even how you're able to perform the task. Now, within the first trimester, there's going to be nausea, vomiting, and this may be uh, severe enough to warrant hospitalization in some cases. In some, it was completely absent. And so you might think, well, how are you going to then plan for something that you never know is going to happen? Well, the best thing to do is to handle it like a risk assessment. And that is why we've designed a maternity risk assessment for you. What we've done is we've taken what is the most applicable scenarios and then given you a guideline of how to apply that. Now, 
some fatigue is almost always present. So statistically speaking, within the majority of those who are pregnant, many face fatigue. So let's say we work on percentage bases for your risk assessment. Then at least you can plan ahead for the most common risks that you might find. Headaches and increased frequency of urination are less common, less common than fatigue. Now, just with those uh, two things, if you can think of fatigue and headaches as being a lesser risk and one being a little bit more or constantly present uh, risk, being fatigued means you're going to be tired. The more strenuous your job is, the quicker you will get tired. And so right in the first trimester, in fact, even before the first trimester, even if you are thinking of getting pregnant, it is a very good idea to speak openly with your employer. Look at the policy that is in place and see what changes or modifications need to be put in place in order to assist you to, first of all, remain healthy for yourself and your unborn child and then later on to protect your safety while you are working on a site which may carry out your tasks but then we get into the second trimester this is between 13 and 28 weeks of pregnancy now this is increased mobility and symphysial and all these other um so uh, sacrilic joints become apparent and the pregnant person may increasingly experience lower back discomfort and stiffness. Now, last week we spoke about a lower back pain and knee pain. I think every plumber has experienced lower back pain in their lifetime. But now it becomes increasingly more of a risk. You will start gaining weight. Uh, generally at this time, many women or those who are pregnant experience dizziness. This is a very, very dangerous situation. Imagine feeling dizzy while you're on top of a ladder, on top of a scaffold, inside a ceiling, or perhaps in an environment that is enclosed like a manhole. It is very important then during this time that you treat each individual specifically to their own required needs, not according to just a basic standard policy that's put in place. And then at the same time, remember that just because it's 13 to 28 weeks of the full trimester, between Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you might have five different outcomes or five different variations of certain risks that might come out. Today, you feel fine. Tomorrow, you have severe lower back discomfort. By Wednesday, you have nausea, constipation, um, hyper motility of the gastrointestinal tract. Later on, you might feel fine again by Thursday. And then Friday, you feel fatigued and you have headaches. Now, what must be understood by this is every single day, you are doing an analysis of what is going to be best for the employee that is pregnant, as well as for the unborn child. So when we put a plan in place, remember, it cannot be a fixed plan set in stone where you've put a policy in place for the pregnant person and you say, well, this is what's going to happen during the pregnancy and that's it. And then something changes and you say, well, this is what we agreed upon. You cannot agree upon something that is unknown, completely unknown. And remember, you haven't even received the advice of the doctor that is taking care of that pregnant person. So all of this information needs to be kept up to date. It needs to be monitored on a daily basis. In other words, open lines of communication between the employer and the employee are vital in these cases. Now we get to the very dangerous part. And at this stage, uh, almost all of the physiologic effects of pregnancy have stabilized at their new levels. Stabilized just means that it is now a consistent risk during the third trimester. Now, uh, there's a lot of things that you can read here, but one of the most important things that I want you to read at, is at the bottom of the screen is balance and equilibrium become problems in most activities. Now, when we're talking about most activities, we're talking about almost every single thing that person does 
becomes almost strenuous. Uh, they battle to keep their balance or their equilibrium, which means they get dizzy, they get fatigued. They might be easily prone uh, to passing out or falling over. This is extremely dangerous, not just to themselves, but obviously to their unborn child. So remember, we spoke about those risks and hazards during pregnancy, during maternity, things that are uh, going to have an impact. Now, these are daily risks and hazards that you face as a plumber in general. For instance, working at heights, there is the potential to fall. And even if you're wearing a harness, uh, there is a potential to fall in the harness. And this could induce suspension trauma, which a person only has 15 minutes to survive before they die. Now, with all of this in mind, if you think to yourself, all right, falling might not be very dangerous, but hanging in a harness is going to be extremely dangerous. Do your research. Is a person who is pregnant and at what stage of pregnancy allowed to be in a harness? Even working at heights, uh, because you've done this for most of your life, you might feel that you are comfortable to work at heights. You have no psychological impact when working at heights. But this could change. This could change later on, especially because you are now pregnant. You think you have an unborn child inside of your body. This could now change your psychological, your mental awareness. You might even feel that you cannot continue to work at heights. Well, agoraphobia has happened in pregnancy, uh, during pregnancy, where the person who is now pregnant feels afraid of heights, even though they used to be working at heights, uh, doing extracurricular activities, sports, or even hobbies that included heights and the thrill of heights. But because of this individual, this person, uh, the change in their mindset, and again, please, we, we want to reiterate this. There's nothing wrong if this happens. We are saying that is a possibility of a change. And because of these changes, you must be aware of what you need to put in place. Now, along with another physical hazard is working in a confined space. All of these things, sewers, manholes, are working inside a tank can increase the likelihood of potential confined space hazards and risks. Even more so, when a person is feeling fatigued, unbalanced, uh, not able to catch their breath, has severe stiffness, uh, back pain, stress, psychological impacts, all of this is going to have a detrimental effect if we put them into these situations and do not look after their safety, protecting them from such dangers. Now, with all plumbers, including those who are pregnant and not pregnant, biological hazards will affect us all because biological waste, stagnant water can be an immediate threat to any person, especially to someone who is pregnant and the health of their unborn child. Now, although any person may be at risk of contracting COVID-19, certain groups of people are at a higher risk of developing serious complications. In fact, uh, looking at the 2020 COVID-19 regulations, employees that are uh, more than 28 weeks pregnant, especially in combination with any of the following conditions, chronic lung disease, diabetes, moderate to severe hypertension, serious heart conditions, chronic kidney disease, uh, chronic liver disease, employees with severe obesity, and employees that are immune compromised. They are even more at risk, which means that we need to look at our risk categories. Low medium and high. Each individual that falls pregnant, wants to be pregnant or goes through a stage of maternity within a company needs to be treated individually. We cannot have a blanket rule or a blanket policy. Yes, some things can be standard according to basic conditions of employment. But remember, those variables are going to affect the different modifications that are made for each person. What about some chemical uh, substances that are used? These could be dangerous and hazardous. The use of chemicals can create the risk of inhalation, ingestion, or skin contact hazards, depending on the type, as well as the quantity of hazardous chemical substances being used. Now, even some chemicals deemed non-hazardous 
may cause adverse reactions depending on the pregnant person's body changing as a result of being pregnant. This is something that you must take into mind. Any chemical, even if you are cleaning out a tank and you are not using anything that is a hazardous chemical substance, if it is a chemical, it has the potential to harm that individual and potentially the unborn child. The best thing you can do is ask the individual to get the advice from their medical practitioner, from their doctor that is treating them. Give open lines of communication and open information to the individual, the pregnant person. Tell them what type of chemicals they're using. Give them the MSDS. Tell them to take it with them to the hospital and get the advice of the doctor. You see, they will know whether that chemical substance and the change in the person's body could potentially cause ill health or later on, are serious complications in the pregnancy. Then there are also ergonomic hazards. Now, we spoke a lot about your body changing during pregnancy. Um, a lot of this is going to be out of your control because it is all part of the pregnancy procedure. Then during normal day-to-day -day life, and even within plumbing, you are constantly bending, reaching, squatting, lifting, crawling. All of this will pose potential dangers specifically now for pregnant persons, especially as they move closer to the second and third trimester. And then these awkward positions can eventually start becoming hazardous to the unborn child. So yes, you might have done the same movements, the same techniques uh, before you got pregnant. During that pregnancy, you might even feel in your own body that you can do something. Just remember that you never wanted to affect your unborn child. Another hazard is the noise and vibration hazards that we find on site. The use of power tools, pneumatic tools, or even operating any machinery will have two hazards. The fact that noise-induced hearing loss can happen and the vibration on a person's body, their skeletal muscle, and also their nervous system can have serious impacts on a pregnant person. And even more so, again, as we mentioned, on the unborn child. So remember, we are looking at this because we want to protect individuals. We want to protect you from your working environment. Temperature, lighting, ventilation will all have an impact. Lone working, excessive hours or overworking will pose undue stress or even workplace environment hazards that can create unwanted situations that can even impact a pregnant person. Radiation, things from welding or soldering, as you do as a plumber all the time. These exposure to flames, smoke, and other forms of radiation emitting works will cause harm potentially to the individual or even to the unborn child. So what are we saying when we're talking about pregnancy hazards? Well, you have stress that is related to pregnancy. From the first day a person finds out that they are pregnant, there may be changes uh, within their body or even mentally. They may start to be concerned or overly anxious with future events. There is nothing wrong. This is just how your body and your mind is dealing with it. But having an open line of communication and having a proper plan for your pregnancy is going to go a long way, not just for you as a pregnant person, but as an employer to protect your, your uh, employee. Every person who is wanting to get pregnant needs to be aware of, of the danger signs that occur during pregnancy. The complications can be unpredictable, so it is good to get the right information from your doctor. Now, remember, you might have serious complications. You might have minor complications. You might have none of the things that we've experienced or spoken to you about today. Every pregnancy is different. And so we're saying that your pregnancy procedure needs to be different for each individual. Having knowledge of these danger signs will help a person to make the right decision both the employer and the employee, because you want to take appropriate healthcare seeking actions. Eventually taking the right actions means receiving immediate and appropriate care. So employers, please, if you are responsible for anyone who falls pregnant, as well as the person who wishes to fall pregnant, you must receive health education about pregnancy. Now, if you want more information, and I found an amazing app from MediClinic. If you just go into MediClinic, there's a MC Baby app. 
I uh, found it on Google Play Store. It's from MediClinic. It takes you through uh, if you want to have a baby, if you have a baby at the moment, uh, or if you are currently pregnant. And then there's some brilliant videos, there's calendars, there's uh, just various different tools for advice and what you can do. Please remember, it's not completely um, packed with all the information for your specific pregnancy, uh, but it is going to give you a guide on what to do for current events and future events later on. Now, while we're talking about all of this during a Tuesday morning toolbox talk, remember coming up for our members in 2023, one of the things we wanted to mention is those hot topic safety discussions. Things that uh, starting in the month of March, we want to look at a specific hot topic, uh, record it. Uh, we're going to put it on the LMA system, and then that will be the hot topic for the month. We want to hear from you. We want your feedback. Because not only are we going to start doing site visits coming up for 2023, uh, we're going to be seeing you a lot at the plumber's evening. So if you're out in the Gauteng area, and you at the plumber's evening in Benoni next week, we'll definitely see you there uh, on the 9th of February. And maybe we can have a personal discussion one-on-one. -on -one. But if you want to just reach out, send us an email, info at ohss.ca.today, safety at iopsa.org, or get in touch with us also on that WhatsApp line. So these topics about pregnancy, about maternity, about COVID, about various other health-related risks and hazards that you might face, specifically safety-related risks and hazards. And remember, we want to speak about the incident reporting and that assistance for statistical analysis. There's a link that we want to send out to you. If you haven't received that link via email from our OPSA yet, we can send it to you on WhatsApp as well. This is to focus on any incident and accident within the plumbing industry. And our focus is looking at struck by incidents and accidents. Uh, now we've joined a panel where we are going to be looking specifically at struck by incidents and accidents. And you'll notice on the 28th of February, we will be giving you all the information that we have found over the past two months, uh, that is January and February, uh, within this committee on what is the definition of struck by incidents and accidents, and then what are those dangers. And then we'll also be doing not uh, really a roadshow, uh, but we are going to be doing a lot of training on this when we come and do our site visits throughout the year to express to you our desire to protect you from these risks and ac accidents. So again, uh, coming up for the new month is the new OHS bill that is going to be released this year. A good reminder to all of our plumbers what you need to have in place. Then what is a toolbox talk and what is the need for toolbox talks moving forward? And then do you have a safety mindset, something that we want to have definitely for January, uh, February and March? coming up in the next few months. And then for the entire 2020, what are struck by incidents and accidents and what are the dangers of these? Throughout the year, we will be expressing the zero is no accident safety slogan, as well as the safety thought for each week. Today, train the future of safety. If you don't have the information, get the information or ask for that information. So thank you very much again.